Hello, I'm Bob Faris Jr. And I'm Toby Walter, and we run a joint laboratory at the Harvard School of Public Health and Harvard Medical School, Harvard Youth Medical Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. And today we'll tell you about a fascinating organelle called the lipid droplet. As you all know, life is defined by an open equilibrium of energy that uh, flows through the biological system and allows the system to maintain its structure and to perform work. But of course, uh, energy availability and the need to expand energy varies greatly over time. And as a consequence, pretty much all biological systems have evolved mechanisms to temporarily store metabolic energy. And they do so primarily, as you can see on this slide, in the form of lipids that contain most of the metabolic stores uh, in a human, for instance. The major lipid that most organisms store energy is, is in triacylglycerols or triglycerides. And they are the universal currency of energy storage because, one, they're energy dense. Two, they are highly reduced and available for oxidation. And three, they don't require water for their storage. In fact, as we all know, oil and water don't mix, so oils are partitioned separately from water, as you can see in the movie on your left. As a consequence of these somewhat unique properties, lipid droplets were about the first organelles to be discovered. Because oil and water diffract light, Richard Altman was able to observe lipid droplets, in this case in frog liver cells, where you can see the densely stained lipid droplets. This is a really interesting uh, book to look at by Richard Altman. He's also the person who discovered bioblasts, later termed mitochondria, uh, and, term, and coined the term uh, uh, nucleic acid or nucleine soil. So lipid droplets are ubiquitous organelles, but they're also highly unusual organelles. As you can see in the electron micrograph on the left from a hepatoma cell, lipid droplets uh, are bounded by a monolayer instead of a bilayer, which is typically what organelles such as the endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, or the nucleus, which are also shown in the micrograph, have. On the right is a schematic of lipid droplets that show their composition. So these organelles have a neutral lipid core, which typically is sterol esters or triglycerides or sometimes waxes, wax esters. And those neutral lipids are bounded by a phospholipid monolayer. And the phospholipid monolayer is decorated by specific proteins that number in the tens to one hundreds and are typically uh, involved in lipid metabolism. Now, the presence of lipid droplets converts cells to emulsions. An emulsion is a system where more than one phase is present at the same time. And in this case, the cell becomes an emulsion because lipid droplets form a dispersed phase in the continuous phase of the cytosol. Because such a system is always metastable, and there's a tendency for both phases to just separate out from each other, uh, there is emulsifier or surfactant required to lower the surface tension and prevent all the droplets from coalescing together. Now, as I mentioned, lipid droplets are ubiquitous. They're found in almost all eukaryotic cells, and they're even found in some prokaryotes. These are some examples of lipid droplets in different cell types, and here we're visualizing lipid droplets with a neutral lipid fluorescent dye, such as bodipi. And as you can see, there are some bacteria that have lipid droplets. In this case, we're showing rhodococcus, but also mycobacteria have lipid droplets. And also shown here are yeast cells with their typical four to eight numbers of lipid droplets, fly cells with lipid droplets, or mammalian cells with lipid droplets. In multicellular organisms, often lipid storage is separated into a dedicated tissue. For instance, in humans, adipose tissue stores most of the triacylglycerol and neutral lipid for energy stores. Importantly, though, pretty much all other cells in the human body have the capacity to make lipid droplets and store energy temporarily. For instance, after a meal, the intestine stores temporarily lipids and lipid droplets, here shown in blue. Uh, the liver takes up lipids from circulation and from, um, uh, from adipose tissue, actually, uh, and temporarily stores those lipids, now shown in, in red here. These are some of the most metabolically active organs. It's also important to remember, for instance, the heart runs predominantly on fatty acids as a fuel, and in some instances, lipid droplets become very prevalent, when, for instance, heart function is compromised. 
there is also a number of really fascinating biology problems or and processes that involve lipid droplets, particularly the secretion of lipid droplets in an unconventional mechanism in the mammary epithelium to make milk, which of course has a lot of fat in it. Now, as Toby mentioned, lipid droplets are part of normal metabolism, and in particular, lipid and triglyceride metabolism. But a proper balance of lipid droplets in cells and tissues is required because, as we all know, basically obesity constitutes a state where there is an excess uh, abundance of lipid droplets in the organism. And conversely, lipodystrophy, or the lack of fat, is a situation in which lipid droplets are scarce or absent. And importantly, both of these conditions are associated with insulin resistance and diabetes and uh, illness. Now, the molecular mechanisms that link the overaccumulation of lipids to disease are still under intense investigation. Generally, it is thought that excess lipids flow over into tissues where they're normally not very abundant. This includes, for instance, the liver, muscle, the pancreas, or the heart. In those cases, it is thought that the lipids, the excess lipids, interfere either directly or indirectly with the normal physiological function of the tissue, and this leads then to a form of toxicity. This has led to a term uh, known as lipotoxicity, first coined by Roger Unger in the 80s. Uh, in some cases, as Bob just mentioned, this then results as an end effect in diabetes, for instance. In other cases, cardiovascular disease, such as chiral myopathy and atherosclerosis, are the consequence of overaccumulation of lipid and lipotoxicity. Uh, lipid droplets and triglyceride storage in lipid droplets are also important in other uh, processes. For example, they have industrial importance. So, for example, in agriculture, seed oil production is uh, a very important aspect of lipid droplet storage and one that, that it is under intense investigation for optimizing oil production. Similarly, for renewable energy, uh, biofuel production essentially relies on the enhanced production of triglyceride storage and lipid droplets. As we told you, lipids in water don't mix, and the formation of droplets is a biophysical process. However, cells have evolved uh, very uh, complicated machinery to synthesize lipids, organize the formation of lipid droplets in specific sites, and to regulate that process. This is an intense area of investigation, and if you want to learn more about it, please stay tuned.